Well, good morning. Today we're continuing on with the study in the book of Jeremiah. Today is chapter 43. And yesterday and the day before we looked at these incidents that ha took place after the king of Babylon had came in and captured Jerusalem, captured the king, took his eyes out, after killing all his family in front of his eyes, putting him in chains and having him sent off to Babylon, along with all of the other captives. We know that Jeremiah was included in that group, but one day out of the, from Jerusalem, Zeradan um, released him and said, you can go anywhere you want. You're God's servant. We're not to, to hurt you, but we'll look after you if you want to come to Babylon. Otherwise, you're free to go anywhere. And so he went back and stayed with the remnant of the Jews, the poor people who were left in Israel. And Johanan asked him to go and pray to God what they should do, the remnant. And God waited 10 days and sent him an answer and said, if you stay here in Israel, there will be peace, you'll be prosperous, You'll have no fear from the your captives. They will treat you well. But if you don't do that, if you decide to go to Egypt, the sword, the famine, and the pestilence, which was here in Jerusalem, will follow you, and you'll all die. And he then delivered that message to Johanan, who said, God didn't tell you to tell us that. What you're saying is wrong. We're not going to obey you. We're going to Egypt anyway. And so that's what happened in the last chapter. And now, and while they were there in the last chapter, the word came to Jeremiah and he said, bury some stones in front of the palace of the king of the Pharaoh in Tephanes. Because King Nebuchadnezzar is going to invade Egypt and he's going to set up his pavilion and he's thrown right where those rocks are. So you've been warned, you broke your covenant, you came down here and you're going to be slaughtered. So let's move on to see what God has in store for him in this. The desolation of Judah for their idolatry is chapter 44. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah concerning the Jews which dwell in the land of Egypt which dwell in Migdol and Tafanez and at Noph and in the country of Pathros, saying, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah, and behold, this day they are desolations, and no man dwells therein. And of course, that was the prophecy God said. They would be a desolation, and nothing would, would live there, no man or beast. Because of their wickedness, which they have committed to provoke me to anger, in that they went to burn incense and serve other gods, whom they knew not, neither they, you, or their fathers. Howbeit I sent unto you my servants the prophets, rising early and sending them, saying, Oh, do not do this abomination, this abominable thing that I hate. Don't do it. But they hearkened not, nor did they incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense to other gods. Wherefore my anger and my fury were poured forth, and was kindled in the city of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate, as at this day. And of course this is around 686 BC. Verse 7. Therefore now thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Wherefore do you commit this great evil against your own souls to cut off from you man and woman, child and suckling out of Judah and leave you none to remain? Why did you break your covenant? Why did you leave Israel when I told you to stay there? In that you provoke me to wrath with the works of your hands, burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt. Why have you gone back to your old ways? I brought you out of Egypt 
where you used to burn incense to other gods. But now you've gone back to Egypt and you've gone back to the old ways. Whither you have gone to dwell, that you might cut yourself off, and that you might be a curse and a reproach among the nations of the earth. Have you forgotten the wickedness of your fathers, and the wickedness of the kings of Judah, and the wickedness of their wives, and your own wickedness, and the wickedness of your wives, which they have committed in the land of Judah, and in the streets of Jerusalem? They are not humble even unto this day, neither have they feared nor walked in my law, nor in my statutes that are set before you and before your fathers. God is very patient. He keeps reminding the Jews of their previous failures, which happens under the law, because the sins are forgiven each year under the law. But they are not forgotten. For us who are under Christ, they are forgiven and forgotten. Immediately we repent of these sins. This is the message that God gave to Jeremiah concerning all the Jews who were living in the northern part of Egypt, in the cities of Migdol, Tafanes, and Memphis, and throughout the southern parts of the Egypt as well. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says, You saw what I did to Jerusalem and to all the cities in the land of Judah. This was because of your wickedness. They now lie in heaps and ashes, without a living soul. For my anger rose high against them, for worshipping other gods. That was the reason. Gods that neither they nor any of their fathers had ever known. I sent my servants, the prophets, to protest over and over again, and to plead with them not to do this terrible thing that I hate, says God. But they would not listen and would not turn back from their wicked ways. They have kept right on with their sacrifices to these gods, small g. And so my fury and my anger boil over and fell as fire upon the cities of Judah and into all the streets of Jerusalem to purify them. And there is desolation until this day. And now the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, asks you, Why are you destroying yourselves? For not one of you shall live, not man, woman, or child among you, who has come here from Judah, not even the babies in arms. For you are rousing my anger with the idols you have made and are worshipping here in Egypt, burning incense to them, and causing me to destroy you completely and make you a curse and a stench in the nostrils of all the nations upon the earth. It is clear from your actions that you did not learn any lessons from what happened in the wilderness when Aaron made the golden calf and you worshipped man and you worshipped man-made idols instead of me. And not even until this time has there been an apology no one has repented and wanted to return to me or follow the laws that I gave you and your fathers before you. Verse 11. Therefore, thus says the Lord of, of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will set my face against you for evil and cut off all of Judah. I will take the remnant of Judah that have set their faces to go into the land of Egypt to sojourn there and they shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. They shall even be consumed by the sword, by famine, and they shall be an excre excreation, an astonish astonishment, and a curse, and a reproach. For I will punish them that live in the land of Egypt, as I punished Jerusalem, by the sword, by famine, and by pestilence. And this time, not even blood on the doorposts of your houses will save you from this destruction. So that none of the remnant of Judah, which have gone down into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall escape or remain, that they should return to the land of Judah, to which they have a desire to return, to dwell there. For none shall return, but such as shall escape. Therefore, the Lord of God, of hosts, the God of Israel, says, 
There is fury in my face, and I will destroy every one of you. I will take this remnant of Judah that insisted on coming here to Egypt, and I will consume them. They shall all die here in Egypt, killed by famine and sword, and all shall die, from the least of them to the greatest. They shall be despised, loathed, cursed, and hated. I will punish them in Egypt, just like I did in Jerusalem, by the sword, by famine and disease. Not one of them shall escape my anger, except those who repent of their coming to Egypt and escape from others by returning again to their own land. Again, God says, I'm going to wipe you out. But if you repent and go back to Egypt, out of, sorry, and leave Egypt and go back to your own land, you'll be safe. God keeps reminding them of their sin, he, but he gives them an opportunity to turn back, repent, go back away from their evil, evil and follow him. And each time he does, they do that, there'll be peace. Verse 15. Then all the men that knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women who stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that you have spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you. We will not hearken unto you. We won't listen to you. We don't care whether it's the truth or not. We're not going to listen to you. We will certainly do whatever thing that goes forth from our own mouth. We will do our own thing. To burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven. Not the King of Heaven. Notice it's the Queen of Heaven. And to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done and as our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, for then we had we plenty of food and were well and saw no evil. Now the queen of, e of, e the queen of Egypt is the frame of heaven and it's the goddess Ishtar. But since we are left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings to her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, did we make her cakes to worship her and pour out drink offerings to her without our men? In this series of scriptures, we see that the people have drifted so far away from God that they do not even think that making offerings to other gods is wrong. Then all of the women present and all of the men who knew that their wives had burned incense to idols, it was a great crowd comprising all of the Jews living in southern Egypt, answered Jeremiah, We will not listen to your false messages from God. They don't even believe that he's now speaking on behalf of God. We are our own bosses. We will do whatever we want to do. And it's the same today. I, I, I. I'm not going to follow what God says. I, I, I am going to do what I want. When I want. How I want. And where I want. We will continue to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and sacrifice to her just as much as we like. Just as we and all our fathers did before us, and our kings and our princes have always done in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For in those days we have plenty to eat, and we are well off and happy. But ever since we stopped burning incense to the Queen of Heaven, and stopped worshipping her, we had been in great trouble and have been destroyed by the sword and by famine. And the women added, Do you think we are were worshipping the Queen of Heaven and pouring out our libertations to her and making kunks for her with her image on them without our husbands knowing about it? They were helping us and being present with us. Of course not. 
Now, who is this Queen of Heaven? This is the name by which Ishtar, the Mesopotamian goddess of love and war, was called. After the fall of Jerusalem, the refugees who fled to Egypt continued to worship her. A papyrus dated from the 5th century BC, found at Hermolopolis in Egypt, mentions the Queen of Heaven among the gods honoured by the Jewish community. Sadly today, the worship of the Queen of Heaven is still part of the Roman Catholic dogma. So do not be deceived. It leads to destruction. And you can find that out on a link if you go up and do a, a Google search of the Queen of Heaven. It's all there. So let's come back now. We'll go back in time, 2,500 years, because this is how long it's taken for us not to learn because we are still doing the same. We will do our own thing. We won't listen to the prophets. Then Jeremiah said unto all the people, to the men and to the women, and to all the people who had given that answer to him, saying, The incense that you burn in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, you and your fathers, your kings and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them, and came it not into his mind? Do you think he didn't know you were doing it? Of course he did. So that the Lord could no longer bear because of the evil of your doings and because of the abominations which you have committed. Therefore is your land a desolation and an astonishment and a curse without an inhabitant as at this day. You have brought this all on yourself, he said. Because you have burned incense and because you have sinned against the Lord and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor in his testimonies. Therefore, this evil is happening to you as at this day. And I say the same thing to the nations of the world today. Because you have refused to follow God's laws, and you have established laws in your governments which are contrary to the laws of God, and you are practicing and worshipping other gods, even today. God has said, there will come a time when I will have to punish you as well. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to all the women, Hear the word of the Lord, all Judah, that are in the land of Egypt. Now comes the warning. This says the Lord, thus said the Lord of hosts. Not this says the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Spelling mistake. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, You and your wives have both spoken with your mouths and have fulfilled with your hands, saying, We will surely perform our vows that we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings to her. You will surely accomplish your vows. God said, Yeah. You've said you're going to do it. You will surely do it. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. All Judah that dwells in the land of Egypt, behold, I have sworn by my own great name, says the Lord, that my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any man of Judah in all of the lands of Egypt, saying the Lord God lives. From now on, you're not going to say that. <coughs> behold, I will watch over them for evil and not for good. And all of the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by the sword and by famine until there be an end of them. I'm going to wipe you all out. Yet a small number that escaped the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. They are the ones who realize there's a mistake. They repent and they escape out of Egypt and go back to the land of Judah, where God said, if you la live in the land of Judah, there will be peace. Yet a small number that escapes the sword shall return out of the land of Egypt into the land of Judah. And all the remnants of Judah that are gone into the land of Egypt to sojourn there shall know whose word shall stand, mine or theirs. 
In this series of scripture, Jeremiah corrects their thinking. Then Jeremiah said to all of them, men and women alike, who had given him the answer about the Queen of Heaven, Do you think that the Lord didn't know about your secret meetings? Do you think that the Lord did not know that you and your fathers and your kings and your princes and all of the people were burning incense to idols in the cities of Jerusalem and in the streets of Jerusalem? Do you think that the Lord God of Israel is blind? It was because he could no longer bear the evil things that you were doing that he made your land desolate and an incredible ruin, cursed without an inhabitant as it is today. The very reason all these terrible things have befallen you is because you have burned incense and sinned against the Lord and refused to obey him. That's the reason. It's all your own fault. Then Jeremiah said to them all, including the women, Listen to the word of the Lord, all you citizens of Ju Judah who are here now in Egypt. The Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says, Both you and your wives have said that you will never give up your devotion and sacrifices to the Queen of Heaven. And you have proved it by your actions. You're still doing it. Then go ahead and carry out your promises and vows to her. But listen to the word of the Lord, all of you Jews who are living in the land of Egypt. I have sworn by my own great name, says the Lord God of hosts, that it will do you no good to seek my help or my blessings anymore, saying, O uh, oh Lord, our God, help us. For I will watch over you, but not for good. I will see to it that evil befalls you, and you shall be destroyed by war and famine until you are all dead. Only those who return to Judah, and it will be only a tiny remnant, shall escape my anger. But all who refuse to go back, who insist on living here in Egypt, shall find out who is telling the truth. Me or you. And this shall be a sign unto you, says the Lord, that I will punish you in this place, that you may know that my words shall surely stand against you for evil. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the hands of his enemies, and into the hands of them that seek his life, as I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, his enemies, and that sought all those that sought his life. And this is the proof I give you, that all that I have threatened will happen to you, and that I will punish you here. I will turn Pharaoh Hopra, king of Egypt, or Aphrees, who ruled Egypt from 588 to 586 B.C., over to those who seek his life, just as I turned Zedekiah, king of Judah, over to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. God says, I'm going to show you proof. I'm going to tell you exactly how it's going to happen. I'm going to turn this king over to Nebuchadnezzar, just like I did Zedekiah, your king in Judah. And you will know now that what Jeremiah is saying is true. And that what you have been saying is wrong. And so that's where we end chapter 44.